Okay. Hello. Um, it's five o'clock in the morning on Sunday. I am kind of wide awake and wanted to do a live video real quick. Um, just give me one second. Uh, hold on a second. I don't know who's up right now, but I guess everyone will see it. Nobody watch. Okay, give me one second. Oh. All right, sorry guys, give me a second. Just need to fix this. One more. I'll be good to go. I haven't done a live in like forever, but I um, did a YouTube uh, live um, and then posted it on Facebook. Okay, I think I'm good now. Let me just check to see if I can hear myself because last time I was talking for a long time and no one could hear me. So I always check to make sure I can be heard. Uh, give me a second. Log back out, go back in, see if I can turn this down. Sorry. Uh, okay. All right, let me see if I can, I guess. Uh, yep, okay, I'm good. All right, let me get started. Um, Oh, hold on a second. All right, let me go all the way down. All right, so um, I know it's five o'clock in the morning, and um, I'm, of course, up. And I know not too many people are probably up Sunday morning at five. Um, anyway, so I'm getting on tonight because. I'm getting on this morning because um, when I was like in the process of about to write, I realized that I completely kind of screwed up. So I figured um, I would share with you guys where I made my mistakes um, with my writing and hopefully it will help you so you won't make the same mistake that I made. Okay, so basically what I want to specifically talk about, and I'm going to post this in uh, my group, Story Storytellers Collaborative, for screenwriters, filmmakers, authors, and writers. So um, this morning, I want to talk about large scale, um, hold on a second, got to get everything out. <laughs> I want to talk about... Oh wait, that's the wrong one. Never mind. Okay, so I'm going to talk about large scale structure and small scale structure. However, today, I mean this morning, I'm going to specifically focus on large scale structure. Okay, so um, basically what I did is um, the other night, it was an evening at seven o'clock for the first time ever, I did a, um, I participated in someone's um, shut up and write uh, meetup. So um, I've always done morning. Uh, so this is my first time with doing evening, which is cool. And um, so for this time, I'm on chapter 15 of my book, um, I Am Faith the Faith Series Trilogy um, Book One. And um, 
So instead of typing for an hour, I ended up doing like a mind map and uh, just basically just, you know, got off the laptop and just completely went into my notebook and started mind mapping. However, I didn't realize that I was really messing up here. So mind mapping is basically like, um, actually, I did a blog on it. So it's posted, um, if you go to my, well, I got a lot of different blogs and different websites, but my main one, if you go to www.fakeseriesridingjourney.org, I mean, dot wordpress.com, you'll get to the blog and you'll see more about, you know, you can read about mind mapping. But so I'm going to kind of skip and just kind of go into um, this actually looks like, I'll just show it to you guys, mind mapping, right? Mind mapping, mapping everything out. So I do that before every chapter that I write. I'm writing a realistic fiction. So it's my life with the fictional twist to it. Um, so I'm gonna get right into it. So for chapter 15, I started with the large scale structure. And the first scene is where Faith is at her home. Um, Faith is the POV, which is the main character. Um, so the protagonist. Um, so basically, I did the first scene, um, which large, which when you write a, um, what is it called? Oh my goodness. I can't remember what it's called, but every, oh, hold on. You know what? I forget what it's called. Let me, let me Google. Cause I totally like, totally forget. Okay, so every, um, hold on a second, do, do, do. This is an awesome website I'm looking at. Okay, so every scene, there we go, has two levels of structure, which is the large scale structure and the small scale structure. What I'm talking about this morning is the large scale structure, because even though it's, large and small scale structure, um, you start with the large one first and then you go to the small one. So um, at that writing uh, group, I started with the large scale structure and um, for my chapter 15. So basically um, with the large scale structure, you have um, your goals, your conflict and the disaster. And then the sequel to your first scene um, is the reactions, the um, dilemma, and the decision, okay? So this is what I did. Um, so I did the first scene, which was Faith is at home. And so the goals, um, I guess I'll go ahead and read uh, what I have down and kind of go through it. So basically, um, every chapter, you want your character to have a goal. And then, so you start the chapter like off um, kind of um, leading, kind of like leading your reader into what the chapter is going to be about, you know. Um, and then it's the time for them to like, ask questions in their head so that while they're reading the chapter, they can have those questions that are in their head answered, a big part of that. So then you go up, 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 and then you have the climax, which is like the main shebang, all the action, all the drama, all the craziness. And then you, then you bring it back down and um, it's, it smooths things out or it, it basically, yeah, well, it smooths, it smooths things out, yeah. Um, but then you have a cliffhanger at the end that makes it like back to like, um, you know, having the reader uh, just kind of figure out like, whoa, <laughs> what is about to happen next? You know what I'm saying? They weren't expecting this, and you know, 
bam, boom, at the end. Okay, so anyways, so um, for my character, um, it's basically um, her goals were um, she had to, well, she was going to this event, okay, and um, she, in this book, she's a publicist and also she's a writer for magazine. So, um, I actually, I changed um, some of the characters. This, this chapter is like my real life, you know, not a mixture of real and fiction like my book is. So this one is actually real life. The only thing I did was I changed the names um, for legal purposes. Yeah, okay. So, but at the same time, um, you guys can figure it out, you know? I mean, I didn't change the names to where it's like completely different. I kind of changed the names to like where you know who I'm talking about without me saying their name, but you know. Okay, so basically, um, there's the first scene is, okay, so Faith, she, her goal is um, for the chapter. And, I, and this will kind of give you an idea on like the goals for your character, like to start out with. So basically like her goal is just basically, you know, preparing for the event. So she gets dressed for the event. Um, she does work-related preparations. Um, and she uh, researches the celebs. She has her laptop, her notebook, um, the event. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm saying this all wrong. Okay. So the goals, get dressed for the event. Okay. Now the work-related preparations include the following, event write-up, interview questions, research celebs, laptop, notebook. So basically before the event, um, she is, uh, she has to study basically the celebs that she'll be interviewing. And, um, and then basically, you know, you kind of put, you know, together, okay, well, what is the character using to research, you know, so she's using her laptop and her notebook. Um, also with doing an event write-up, like she has like a, kind of like a, like a format that she uses for um, events. Uh, so anyways, um, and then she has to figure out interview questions. Now, Faith doesn't do like basic interview questions. That's why she does her research. So basically, um, she, I'm speaking in, <laughs> I know I'm talking about myself, but this is a fiction book. So I'm talking as if I'm, if it's the character. So, you know, I hope you don't get confused. So anyways, so she has to um, come up with, questions that are going to be thought provoking that are going to really make the celebrity think about their answer really um you know make the the questions interesting and just basically um do questions that they probably have never been asked before that's how the character uh faith does her um interview questions so um the celebs that she's interviewing um, is Lil Clip, Slim Jones, and Leela. So those are the three, okay? And um, also the DMV Dreamers. Um, that's just a local uh, rap group. And look, they have a singer in the group. Okay, so they're called the DMV Dreamers. Now that is like totally made up. The DMV Dreamer's name, that's just made up completely. The others are, you know, you kind of figure it out. Okay, so the second part of um, the first scene is the conflict. So with the conflict, um, 
she uh, um, Zavion, one of the characters. Now that one is that name is completely just made up. Zavion is one of the is one of the uh, characters in this chapter. Well, he was in other chapters, but this particular chapter. Um, he calls Faith and um, basically they had a dinner in chapter 14 talking about this entire event and all this good stuff. And um, they, you know, they hired her as a publicist. They're doing, they're performing with, you know, they're opening up for celebs and all that good stuff. So, you know, they pretty much everything was broken down on how the event was going to go as far as like, not how the event was going to go, but leading up to the event. So basically, Xavion calls and tells Faith that change, there's been a lot of changes to the plans. So basically, um, they said that they're going to be, the DMV Dreamers are going to be arriving um, later to the meetup. Um, even though they're supposed to meet with Faith at the same time. Um, so the other conflict is um, the early timing. Uh, they told Faith that she needed to get there earlier than planned. That was another conflict. And then the meetup location changed. And um, also... Uh, Faith's excitement uh, was kind of like in the middle, like in the beginning, she was like excited. She's like completely happy and all this stuff. Then she gets all these, this phone call with all these plans changing. So her, you know, excitement kind of is like, eh, not really there. So um, they, they, uh, he told her that she will be meeting up with someone different, someone she doesn't know someone she's never met before, someone she's never talked to before, not on the phone, not nothing, not, you know, has no clue about this person whatsoever. So, and this is who she has to go to Baltimore to meet and not know this person at all. Okay, so then the disaster comes. Okay, so basically in the scene, excuse me, the disaster of course. Hmm. Excuse me. Okay. Um, she is rushing to leave. She's rushing to get out the house. Story of my life. So um, she wants, so she's not able to like review her preparation. So she did all these preparations, not even able to preview it. So, I mean, review it. So that kind of sucks. So, um, so because she's rushing out, I mean, because she has to rush around getting ready and all that good stuff, she leaves out late, no preparations as far as reviewing everything that she prepared. Um, she is now told by the person, by Xavion, that she can only interview little clip. So um, basically, that's the situation right there is, you know, she did all this planning and only able to interview one person. And so her excitement level completely lowers even down even further. So, um, and that was due to preparation. She's blown about that. It's like, I did all this work. Like if I didn't, if I knew ahead of time, I mean, sorry, if she knew ahead of time, then she would have, um, been able to like plan her day her evening out better so that she could um get more done instead of wasting time thinking um otherwise and leaving out late so then i did the second scene sequel which is driving to baltimore i'm gonna get to where i messed up at so basically um She's driving to Baltimore and let's see. There's the one is the reactions, two is the dilemma and three is the decisions. 
So that is the um, second part of the large scale structure that goes in with the first scene. However, this actually, this was the sequel to the second scene. Totally messed up. I'll tell you why later. Okay, so I have sequel, second scene, driving to Baltimore. Okay, so her reactions, um, she lo she's low on gas, but she keeps driving anyway. She doesn't stop because she's late. Story of my life. Okay, um, so she's having anxiety because, you know, <laughs> she didn't stop at the gas station, kind of blown about that. And it's like, oh my God, she's going to make it there or not or what. She should have got gas. So it's like, ah. So then um, also have anxiety because like if she ends up late, she's going to miss interviewing Lil Click. And then um, another thing is she's in deep thoughts as she's driving, um, trying to figure out how she's going to interview him because she wasn't able to preview. I mean, pre what's the name? She wasn't able to preview, I mean, review her preparations um, prior to leaving out the house. So um, she's just literally like kind of remembering every all the questions in her head and, you know, kind of like how she's going to answer them. I mean, ask them and the order she's going to ask them in. Just all that stuff is like all going through her head. Okay. Um, she Another reaction is she's nervous. And the reason she's nervous is because she doesn't know the person she's meeting up with. So she's like beyond nervous. I mean, who wouldn't be if, you know, you don't know who you're meeting up with. You only have a name. Um, well, I didn't put the name of that character yet. I got to add that somewhere. Um, she is going to Baltimore and she's not meeting up with her clients. So it's like, she's really nervous because she doesn't know that person. Um, she's disappointed as well. So that's another reaction. She's disappointed because she can't interview Slim Jones. She can't interview Layla. She can't, oh yeah, those are the, other, those are the two she can't interview. Um, that she can only interview Lil Clip. So, um, she was disappointed. So those are the reactions and that's it for there. Oh, 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 her other reaction and the reason why she's nervous is because she doesn't know exactly when the DMV dreamers are gonna meet up. They actually never told her the time that they were going to show up. So it's like, that's another thing that made her nervous because it's like the people that you do know kind of because they just came on board as your client you don't even know when they're going to show up which kind of like it really sucks okay so then there's the dilemma so tonight i did the dilemma because um i wasn't doing anything else and i was <laughs> was wide awake uh so i was like why not you know so then I did the dilemma, which um, the dilemma was for Faith. Um, she has no choice but to stop at the gas station because she was low on gas and she knew she wasn't going to make it. Um, oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me skip back to the reactions. Um, one of the reactions of having anxiety is because um, she did end up uh, getting lost and the wrong turn, which made her getting lost. So that, that was part of her reactions of anxiety struck while she's driving. Okay, the dilemma, like I said, no choice to get gas. Um, should she continue to uh, go to the event um, or should she turn around and go back home? The reason she's in that dilemma or trying to figure that out is because one, she doesn't know what time her clients are showing up. She's meeting someone she doesn't know. She's supposed to be interviewing one celebrity, the other two she's not. And if she's late, she might miss 
being able to interview him. So all this stuff is going through her mind. And it's like, you know, should I go? Should I not? You know what I mean? So, I mean, should she? I'm talking, I need to talk as a character. So she should go or not. Okay, so then she gets another phone call from Xavion. Now, this is another dilemma. He calls Xavion and tells, I mean, Xavion calls Faith and tells her that he, she is doing the interview on Little Clip's tour bus. So that's another dilemma. So she's trying to figure out, should she go to the event or should she go back home? One, she's never been on a tour bus before, ever in her life. Two, she knows what goes on to when females and guys are on the tour bus, you know, especially with celebs and stuff like that. So it was kind of like, does she want to still go and interview him? Like, you know, walking into a situation um, where you know what goes on in these type of situations with tour buses, but then at the same time, you know, you're excited because, I mean, she's excited. <laughs> she's excited because she's never been on a tour bus. So like, oh, this is a first time chance to be on a tour bus with a celeb. Okay. And doing an interview. So it's like, perfect. Why not? Um, so at the same time, though, she doesn't know who she's meeting up with, her clients, she doesn't know when they're coming. And now she knows she has to go on a tour bus with a person she doesn't know and has no clue what is going on in there as she goes into, as she would go, I mean, as she plans to go into the tour bus, she doesn't know what she's going to expect to see or anything. So, so the not knowing a lot of things is making Faith want to like go back home. But then again, not experiencing a lot of things as a publicist and a writer, she wants to go. And then also to support um, her new clients and then also um, to interview um, someone she's never interviewed before. And then it's like, well, you know, that there's going to be other celebs there. There's going to be other like, you know, like just a lot of different um people in the industry are, are going to be there. So there's like, it's going to be awesome, like networking. And so it's kind of like, um, this is the best time to go. Um, so basically, um, let's see. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so the decision, um, I, there wasn't really much of a decision. It's just like she had to decide where to park because it's like either you don't want your car to be like towed and stuff like that. And it's not really a lot of places to park in Baltimore where one, it's safe. And two, you don't know if um, your car is going to be towed if you're parked in a different wrong place or whatever. So parking was an issue like, oh, you know, should she park here? Should she park there? And blah, blah, blah. But um, when she contacts the person that she's meeting he tells her to like pull in in the back of like it's kind of like a i don't want to say alley um but it was kind of like that it was a side street where there's really no cars going in and out you know so it was kind of like there's cars there's a few cars parked there, like through the street or whatever, but there was no like people interaction, like no, nothing going on, just the cars. <laughs> so she's nervous about parking there and he tells her like, it's completely okay, like a hundred percent okay. So um, then um, she gets out and um that's where i stopped <laughs> this is when i realized i messed up on 
a lot of things. So where I messed up is the, I did first scene, which is um, literally the, um, the level, which one of the levels is the scene. Then I went into the sequel, second scene. You're not supposed to do that. What you do is the first scene that has the goals, the conflict, the disaster. Excuse me. Then you do the first scene sequel, which is the reaction, um, the dilemma, the decision. But what I did, I did the second scene sequel, reaction, dilemma, and decision. Um, so what I forgot to do is in the first scene, I forgot to do the sequel to the first scene, which would be the reaction, dilemma, and decision. And then once you get to the sequel, um, after you finish the disaster, you go into the sequel is a new scene. And then you have to repeat the process. So now the second scene is going to have a goal, a conflict, and a disaster. And then the sequel to the second scene is going to have the reaction, the dilemma, and the decision. And then if there's another scene, so in my case, there's going to be another scene. So it's going to go um, the third scene is going to be the same thing. You is the repeat. So you have the goal, conflict, disaster. Then from there you have the sequel, which is the reaction, dilemma, and decision. So that's pretty much the process of um, of writing a chapter. That's just one of the processes, you know what I'm saying? There's others that I didn't talk about. I mean, I wrote, I wrote about in my blog, but I didn't talk about it um, in this video. I'm not gonna talk about it. But anyways, I'm just trying to focus on the large scale structure. So um, what I have to do now, so anyway, so I'll show you guys. This is basically what I've done uh, here. And then, I went all the way up, down, 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 and then here. So now what I have to do is like pretty much um, get rid of, well, I'm going to have to kind of, kind of get rid of this part, like all of it and only put some of it as the sequel to the first scene. And then a lot of it, I have to um, do the second scene um, and then do the sequel to the second scene, which now this will be in that part. So it's very confusing. And now I gotta do a whole nother page all over again, which means you see this at the top right here. I'm going to have to do all of that over on another page. That's just, I have no choice because I messed up. So um, I hope you guys uh, learn from my mistake. So again, the there's two levels of a scene. I'm just going to repeat this and um, move forward. There's two levels of a scene. There's the um, large scale structure and the small scale structure. I'm talking about the large scale structure, which is in a scene, you have um, the goal, conflict, disaster. In the sequel to the first scene, you have the reaction, the dilemma, and the decision. Um, so yeah, so basically that's pretty much um, where I'm at with chapter 15, planning. Now the crazy thing is sometimes I do like all this planning and then 
when I'm writing, my story goes like somewhere else. So I just follow where my writing takes me and go from there. And then I try to get back to my planning. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And it's funny because what I plan is kind of like, you know, even though I wrote out what I planned when I started writing, the what I started writing actually is much better than what I planned. And sometimes that turns in, that's where it turns into fiction. Um, and then I got to get it back to my story uh, in a fictional way because it's realistic fiction. A lot of people can relate to my book. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, the small scale structure, um, I didn't do that yet for chapter 15, but I'll go ahead and talk to you about it. Um, this is not from my words. This is actually from a website. Um, I, I've always skipped the small scale structure. After I do the large scale structure, I just go ahead and start writing. However, um, now that I realize like I was skipping the small scale structure, it's like, you know what? Chapter 15, I'm gonna start doing um, it the right way. So, I mean, you don't have to do this the way I'm doing it. This is just one option for writers that are new. So this is my first book. So I try to learn as much as I can. So um, the small scale structure, um, uh, is MRUs. So motivation slash reaction units. So it's called MRUs for short. Um, so basically what you do, I'm just kind of skimming this to just go right into it. Um, let me go, hold on. Okay, so Okay, so basically, hmm. okay, so basically doing the small scale stru structure, you're putting paragraphs together um, of the theory. Uh, let's see. Okay, so basically um, with your POV character, um, which is the point of view character, the protagonist, the main character, all of that good stuff, um, the, you, your paragraph is going to speak about what your character sees, which is the motivation. The, then um, the reaction comes you know, of, you know, what that, what your character um, does. So you have the motiv motivation and then the reaction to the motivation, like what did the character do? Okay. Um, so the motivation, I was actually um, speaking with an, art, an author the other day about the senses when you're writing chapters. There's five senses. There's smell, there's taste, there's see, vision, there's hearing, and no, no. Let me go to the five. I'm missing one. Give me one second. The five senses. 
Sorry, guys. Give me one second. I'm missing literally one of it. I want to give it to you. Let me see here. Typing too fast. Five senses. Book. Okay, so you have... Oh, it is. I never mind. Okay, so you have the sight, touch, smell, taste, and hearing. Okay, so basically, that's that's the five senses when you write a chapter in each scene for each character. So let me get back to the small scale structure. Okay, so back to motivation slash reaction. In the reaction phase, see, I'm reading from here, like, because um, I haven't done this small scale structure ever. Um, but I'm going to do it for chapter 15. Okay, so The reaction is going to be what your character. Hmm. I missed it. Where did it go? Oh, I need to go down some. Okay, here it is. So uh, I take that back. The motivation, okay, so in this website, it says the motivation is objective, but it is something that your character can see or hear, smell, taste, or feel. So you'll write this in such a way that your reader also sees it, hears it, smells it, tastes it, feels it. Um, so basically, that is the motivation. Um, so what you'll do is you'll write a paragraph in which your POV character does one or more things in reaction to the motivation. Hmm. That's kind of confusing for me. Um, this is the exact sequence you must follow in writing your reaction. The sequence is based on sociologically possible no the motivation is external and objective the reaction is internal and subjective if you do this you create in the reader the powerful illusion that he is experiencing something real now let's break it down into more detail mm. okay so basically this is confusing let me go to where she says she's breaking it down um, okay, so the motivation is external and objective. Um, oh, I forgot. So basically what you're going to be doing is writing a paragraph. She didn't say when to write the paragraphs or where to write the paragraphs. Um, I don't see it here. I lost it. Well, just know, during this time, on the small-scale structure, you're writing paragraphs. Um, okay, so the motivation is external and objective, and you present it in that way. In objective external terms, you do this in a single paragraph. It does not need to be complicated. Okay, so... This is a, a simple example that she used. The tiger jumped out of the tree and sprung toward Jack. Note the key points here. This is, oh, just for, to let you guys know what I'm reading from, it's called advancedfictionwriting.com. Okay, so note the key points here. This is objective. We present the motive, blah, blah, blah. We, we present the motive, ah, I was gonna say modification. 
we present the motivation as it would be shown by a video camera. Nothing here indicates that we are in Jack's point of view. That comes next, but in the motivation, we keep it simple and sharp and clean. The tiger jumped off, I mean, the tiger jumped out of the tree and sprung toward Jack. One, that's not a paragraph. Two, the video camera can, you know, can definitely see that. And the reader can visualize that. Um, the motivation, there we go, is basically the tiger needs to get closer to Jack. That's the motivation. I get her point now. The reaction is internal and subjective. And you present it in that way exactly as your POV character would experience it from the inside. Um, this is your chance to make your reader be your POV character. That's right. When, you, when you're writing a book, you have to write um, for your readers. So like when I say that, basically um, your, your reader can like, like turns into that character. So um, the reader puts themselves into the story and reading it out that way, okay? So basically um, that's what she's saying, or he, whoever, I don't know who wrote this, I don't know. Um, this must happen in its own paragraph or sequence of paragraphs. If you leave it in the same paragraph as the motivation, then you risk whipsawing the reader, which no reader enjoys. Um, one sentence is not a paragraph, so I don't really know why she wrote that, okay. And then she said, okay, so the reaction is more complex than the motivation. The reason, okay, um, let me just skip all this, skip all this. Okay, so when you see the tiger, you only have time for one thing, which is fear. So Jack is in fear because he sees the tiger. Within a few moments, Jack has to react on instinct or reflex. Then uh, shortly after that reflex, reflexive reaction, you also have time to react rationally, to act, to think, to speak. So basically, Jack has fear. Um, he has to think about what he's going to do before the tiger does it. And um, no, he has fear, then he's going to react to that fear. So he's going to do something to react to that fear. And then the last part is the character Jack is going to think, speak, act. I thought I just said act. Okay, so before you act, or before Jack acts, thinks, or speaks, and between the fear, um, that's the few moments of like, okay, it's now time for me to act on what is about to go, what I don't want, well, what Jack doesn't want to happen, does not want to go down. How is, what is he going to do and stuff like that? So um, the character's reaction in order, so it's, from fastest time scale to slowest. Um, if you put them in, if you put them out of order, then things just don't feel right, of course. Um, you destroy the illusion of reality, true, and your reader won't keep reading because your writing is not realistic, even if you got all the facts right. That's true. Um, okay, here's an, a simple example. Um, Okay, a bolt of raw adrenaline shot through Jack's veins. 
he jerked his rifle to his shoulder, sighted on the tiger's heart and squeezed the trigger. Die, you bastard. Okay, she says, now let's analyze this. Note the three parts of the reaction. Okay, feeling a bolt of raw adrenaline shot through Jack's veins. You show the, this first because it happens almost instantly. So basically he's feeling the shot. The reflex is he jerked his rifle to his shoulder. So now you're showing, um, this is in the next order. Um, because he's in fear, he's jerking his rifle. And, and he's not thinking straight about what he's about to do. So the rational action and speech. Um, so he sighted on the tiger's heart. There we go with the C. Um, and squeezed the trigger, the act. Um, and he spoke dialogue. Die, you bastard. Um, so you put this last. When Jack had time to think and act in a rational way, he pulls the trigger, a rational response to the danger. That makes sense. He speaks a rational expression of his intense emotion, rea emotional reaction. You get that? So basically that, I get that. I mean, I think you guys should get that too. Um, pretty sure now because I kind of broke it down. The person that wrote this broke it down. Um, Okay. Okay. She says, it, or he, if there's feelings involved in your paragraph, it has to come first. Okay. That's all. Then after the reaction comes another motivation. So now it's like a rip, like a, um, it's kind of like the large scale structure where you have the, um, that process repeating it when a new scene comes. Now with this is the same thing. You have a new motivation and reaction after you finish the first reaction. So, Okay, when you run out of motivations or reactions, your scene or sequel is over. Don't run out too soon. Don't drag on too long. Okay, so write each scene and sequel as a, as a sequence of MRUs. Any part of your scene or sequel which is not an MRU must go. Cut it, uh, show no mercy. You cannot afford clarity for a single sentence that is not pulling its weight. And the only part of the scene that pulls the weight are the MRUs, all else is fluff. That makes sense. Um, it's funny that she wrote, he or she wrote that because I read um, some of my, uh, uh, in my chapter, I think it was chapter, seven or eight, where I was reading where um, there's four, four people critiqued that chapter. And they spoke a lot of, I repeated a lot of sentences, words. Um, there is um, sentences in there. I was too wordy that could have just been taken out or reworded, you know what I mean? So um, this is really gonna help me with chapter 15 with focusing on the small scale structure with um, the M, with the MRU and, um, and yeah, so basically, I'm going to follow this specifically. Um, and that's going to help me. And I hope it helps you too of what I'm telling you guys. So basically, I'm 
going to not skip this part. Now, in the paragraph, um, I thought she said at the beginning that he, should, he said to be detailed as much as possible. I don't know. You guys just go over to advancedfictionwriting.com and you guys can see what I'm talking about. And um, so basically, basically what I'm going to do is um, now I don't know if you write a paragraph for each what, you know what I mean? Like, excuse me, um, let's see here. Maybe she says it or he says it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, written this okay. Um oh here it is. Okay, she writes she did or he she he she whatever. Um okay, so here it is. So when you're done writing your goal conflict and disaster for your scene. Um, you're gonna write, you're gonna identify them each in one sentence su summary. So basically, when I read to you guys the different um, parts of the goal, the different parts of the conflict, the different parts of the disaster, which you can see right here when I mean different parts, I'm talking about um, this is the goal and then the different parts that you know you see right here about the goal. So basically for each of these um, So basically I'm going to take all of this together that all goes with my goal and I'm going to put it into one sentence summary. So I'm going to do the same thing with conflict. I'm going to do the same thing with disaster. Um, Okay, so now now, okay, so now it says, now that you know what your scene is either seen or sequel, rewrite it MRU by MRU. Make sure every motivation is separated separate it from every reaction by paragraph break. Um, it is okay to have multiple paragraphs for a single motivation or a single reaction. Um, it, is a, <laughs> it is a capital crime to mix them in a single paragraph. When they are separated correctly, you may find you have extra parts that are neither motivation nor reaction. Throw them away, no matter how beautiful or clever they are, they are not fiction and you are writing fiction. <laughs> okay, so basically once I've wrote out the one sentences of the goal, conflict and disaster, then I'm gonna add in the motivation and the reaction, which is the MRU, which is the motivation reaction units. Um, <laughs> she said he said uh, he or she said examine each motivation and make sure that it is entirely objective and external which i spoke about um earlier when uh, this person was saying about the external internal show no mercy you cannot afford mercy on anything that poisons your fiction kill it or it will kill you okay so basically you got to really make sure your motivation and reaction um entirely like defines 
your one summary for each goal, conflict, and disaster. Um, again, make sure you do feelings first, then read the then feelings, action. Um, no, feelings, reflexive action, the final rational action, and the speech. Again, eliminating everything else. Okay. So I think you guys will get this. I, I'm uh, getting it uh, to a degree. Um, now, when you reach to the end of the scene, whether it is a scene or a sequel, check to make sure that everything is correctly placed in the MRU and all our and all the other stuff that you know you don't need it, throw it out. Um, feel free to edit the scene for style, clarity, wit, spelling, grammar, and anything you know how to do when you are done, pat yourself on the back. You have written a perfect scene. All is well in your world. You are done with this scene. Now go do it again and again until you finish your book. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Um, so basically, this will be my first time. I'll probably like do it tomorrow. Uh, I mean today, because it's five minutes to six. Um, so this is going to be my first time doing a small scale structure. I For years, I've done large scale structure with this book. So um, I'm going to test this out um, and see how it works for me. Um, this person kind of made it a little bit confusing. Uh, so I kind of want to go to another site that's more less confusing because I mean I get what she was saying or he was saying but it's, it was just I wasn't really feeling it um God, there's so many different um not really preferred book there's so many different websites that talk about writing so much it's like okay Um, um, let me put in scene, small scale structure scene, maybe that makes more sense, so I, I can get some searches going. Okay. Here we go. This website is the novels, I mean, the novel smithy.com. I've never been to this site, but let's see what it says. Um, okay, it goes into the action reaction. Da, 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 da. I want to get to the small scale. So, right now, this person's talking about um, the large one. Mm. Still, well, you guys <laughs> definitely head over to the novel smithy.com. Um, she breaks it, he or she breaks it down too. Um, but this one. Wait a second. This one. Okay, here. You know what, guys? I take that back. If you want to go to learn more about the large scale structure, you can go to that site. Um, I just went through it. 
it doesn't talk about the small scale structure. So let me go, I know it's um, been an hour. Let me go to one more site. And if not, I'll just let it go. Cause this is irritating me. I want something like that's kind of more easy to understand. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, here we go. Here's another site. Let me see if it talks about the small scale. Are you kidding me? I Google everything. This person just threw this together. Um, okay. Okay, so basically, let's just stick to what I read in the beginning. So you guys go to the website, because this website pretty much talked about what this other website was saying, but it just kind of everything that that website was saying in detailed this site just threw it together in like a three sentences or something so that's not helpful so i'm going to tell you guys the website again to go to it's called advancedfictionwriting.com and if you type in um let's see if you type Okay, so basically, just type in, um, hold on, let me go back to this. So type in, because you're probably not going to remember the website I just said. So type in large scale structure and then you can just put scene book okay and it's going to come if you scroll down if you scroll down you know what just put large scale structure scene and take off the word book And it's going to come right up <laughs> okay so again go to google put in large scale structure scene and the advancedfictionwriting.com will come up and it says writing the perfect scene advanced fiction writing tips so you definitely want to um go there uh i'm definitely going to go there <laughs> Uh, to do the small scale structure for chapter 15. Um, so first of all, I do not know that website, uh, whoever runs it, I'm not promoting that website anyway. Um, I'm just a writer trying to learn more about small scale structure because I've never done that before. And wanted to share that with you guys. So, um, yeah, so again, um, if you do have any questions about um, anything that has to do in regards to writing a book, uh, hit me up. Um, if you want to know more about large scale structure, I'm like 
really good in that area because I've done that for every chapter. Um, if you want to know more about small scale st structure, I would suggest you go to the website <laughs> um, because I really need to kind of dive into it. And then maybe at some other point, I'll do like a blog or a Facebook live or a YouTube live when, um, when I can pretty much understand how to do a small scale structure because I don't know at all. Um, so yeah, and this is my first time writing a book and um, I also edit books, but um, is different is different when you're writing your own book and editing someone else's books. Completely different. Um, so yeah. So other than that, that's just what I wanted to talk about. Um, you can find me on Twitter at uh, book underscore publicity. You can find me on Instagram at um, CCE Public Relations Boutique Firm. And I'm also at Tashawn Marie. Um, Tashawn Marie is my personal Instagram. CCE Public Relations Boutique Firm is the um, business um, page, our Instagram page. Um, Facebook, uh, you can find me at, I have three, um, well, to be exact. I have four Tashawn Marie Facebook personal pages don't get on one of them because it has nothing to do with nothing I'm talking about. So that one is in regards to paralegal, criminal, defense stuff. It's nothing to do with anything else. The other three, um, the other three Facebook personal pages are uh, what I focus on um, for anything that has to do with like writing, entertainment, music, all that good stuff. Um, personal, then I have, um, two business pages on Facebook, which is Celestial Caring Enterprise, so you can go there. Um, also, I'm on Pinterest under Tasha Marie, um, LinkedIn, Tasha Marie. Um, I have a website, it's under construction, but you can still go to it but it's www.celestialcaringent.com. Um, also, so that is www.celestialcaringent.com. And I actually have it right here if you guys wanna see it. It's really cool. Um, hold on a second. See, if you guys can, hold on kind of see it right here on my tattoo, it says uh, Celestial. So C-E-L-E-S-T-I-A-L, caring, ENT.com. Um, also, what else? Um, oh, join my group. We have 176 members so far. It's a closed group. It's called Storytellers Collaborative for Screenwriters, Filmmakers, authors and writers. So make sure you check that out. Um, if you forget what I just said, <laughs> you just need to go on Facebook search and type in um, Storytellers Collaborative and it will come right up. Um, other than that, I'm going to go ahead and in this live, I am getting tired. It's six o'clock in the morning. Um, I doubt I will make there's a, oh, there's a shut up and write. Uh, someone's hosting it on meetup at 10 a.m. to 11.30 um, this morning. Uh, so what you need to do is go to meetup, go to search, type in shut up and write, and it will give you all the dates and times. Um, I, I was, planning on going to um, to it so that I can, um, you know, focus on writing, but it's six o'clock in the morning. 
Um, I don't know if I'm going to wake up to make it in time to write um, during that time between 10 and 1130. So, but at least you guys can do it if you uh, are going to be up and you want to. All you got to do is free. All you got to do is register. And um, I was going to say, um, you'll receive the the Zoom link. It is virtual. And basically on Shut Up and Write, um, the host will uh, get the meeting started. We'll go around to every person and you know, you tell them, like, what are you going to work on today? And then um, everyone says what they're going to work on today. And then um, for that one hour, and then the host says, shut up and write. <laughs> so you can either keep your camera on or you can keep your camera off. Um, sometimes I have my camera on. Sometimes I have it off. The reason I have it on sometimes is, you know, one, it helps motivate other writers um, to stay focused and to write. <laughs> and um, when I have it off is probably because um, I'm just not in the mood to have it on or um, maybe I'm like, I don't know is it varies like i'll have whatever reason to have it off um but i still we still keep you know it up though so like um if if i like get distracted or something i'll look at the screen and i'll see other writers like writing or doing whatever they're doing and it's like okay i need to get back to it so it's a, uh, um, I forget what you call it, but it, it gets, it gets you motivated to stay focused, you know, and a lot of people do that on YouTube. There's a lot of study groups on YouTube where, um, it really, uh, just, um, helps others like participate, like not participate on, well, I guess on your, on your page, but but it basically helps um, you stay focused when you see other people, you know, focused on what they're doing. So if they're focused on studying, you're going to focus on studying when you visualize, like when you like really see them, you know what I mean? Um, some of them have study for like 10 hours, 18 hours, 32 hours, whatever. And they keep their YouTube on and they're like really like just studying, you know, boom, boom, boom. And and you're doing the same thing on your end. It's really cool. So um, it was funny because I'm like, hmm, I had the idea. I was like, let me do it on Facebook Live where I'm like doing work on live. But it kind of didn't work out because I did more talking than working. So I stopped that. <laughs> and I stopped it for a lot of other reasons too. So um, other than that, um, that's all I wanted to talk about this morning was large scale structure and small scale structure and kind of, you know, what I learned, where I messed up at and all that good stuff and how I'm going to fix it and what I need to do. And so anyways, I hope this video was helpful to you as well. Um, I don't know when I will be back on. But uh, definitely, um, if you have any questions about it, hit me up. If you need the link, uh, hit me up or hit me up for any reason. Um, you know, if uh, you have a, like any question about whatever I said in regards to this video. Um, so everyone have a blessed Sunday and um, I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone. Good, good morning and good night, everyone. Take care.